Well, heavy rains also falling in some parts of Hawke's Bay, where authorities have taken the precaution of evacuating Esk Valley. Civil Defence say it's not sure how fast the Esk River will rise and doesn't want to be rescuing people off roofs. Alexa Cook has been in the valley where residents are once again up against the elements. Steve Wheeler's trying to salvage what he can before he evacuates again. We've been told, get out, so we'll go. He's been busy piling up a lifetime of cherished belongings, ready for the dump. All junk. But this is as far as he'll get today. Down the road, Chris Beatty is also leaving because of the heavy rain warning. We're talking about 20 an hour, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big concern, really. His beautiful farm now unrecognisable. People would say, you know, you've, you've cracked it, you know. But today, I think I'm an idiot for living here. Civil Defence isn't taking any chances. They've ordered anyone left in Esk Valley to evacuate immediately. This is a preemptive and a conservative approach, but, you know, I definitely do not want to be uh, rescuing people off the top of uh, roofs at short notice. The directive came as people tried to get their possessions out while they still could. As the rain starts to fall in Esk Valley, the river starts to fill up and this is what Met Service is worried about. They're predicting there could be over 150 millimetres of rain. The river is known to rise quickly and it is known to burst its banks and so we really just want to make sure um, that people are safe tonight. Which is why the council is fixing its busted stop banks after five kilometres were breached in last week's flood. Small breaches, uh, large breaches, we have scouring on both river and land side uh, and in a lot of places where those breaches are we also have significant undermining of the foundation. Uh, some of those holes are uh, up to four or five, six metres deep, so present quite a challenge uh, when it comes to our rebuild program. One of the stock bank failures was at Marae Nui Golf Club, where it flooded into Te Awa Avenue. I don't think this should have happened. Dave Watt believes the bank was weakened by golf club vehicles and a lack of vegetation. He's holding the regional council responsible and wants an apology. Have they got a department that's supposed to check the stock banks and why haven't they done that? It's not on our scheme. So in that regard, um, it, it is what it is. It's been left. It's on designated land. In the sky above, aircraft like this Black Hawk have been busy flying supplies to cut off communities. Delivering everything from generators to diggers, food and fencing gear. We can get up to, you know, sort of between two and three tonne of, uh, of product in here. The damage he's seen from above has been eye-opening. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty sad, to be honest. There's a lot of really um, amazing farms and amazing community areas that have actually been brutalised um, by the, the event. Everyone just hoping tonight's rain doesn't make it even worse. So Alexa, you're at the Esk Valley roadblock. When will people be allowed back to their homes? Well, that all depends on what the river does tonight. There is up to 40 millimetres of rain an hour forecast for some areas, and that's expected to hit, especially in the early hours of tomorrow morning. So it could not, it might not be till later in the day that people are allowed back through this roadblock and into their homes. Now, because of the amount of red-stickered properties, there are only 40 houses up there that are being lived in at the moment, and a lot of those people are really eager to get back as soon as they can to continue that mammoth task of clearing up. So civil told us that they will make an assessment again in the morning but they won't be letting anyone home until they're confident that the threat of that river has passed. Alexa Cook live from Esk Valley, thank you so much.